folks. How you doing? Russell True Results 303.com. Check out the website. Once again, thank you for spending time with me. I appreciate it. I hope you're learning things. That's what the channel's for. Links in the description box, website, social media, other videos on these topics coming at you today with a fatherless nation. We did a motherless nation. We did a childless nation. We're at a fatherless nation. Links will be in the description box depending on if I've released all the videos. Of course, I can't put a video link in there that is not released. Eventually, all of them will be down there in the bottom. So, of course, like the other two, we are going to start with contraception. That's the way it goes, unfortunately, right? Um, contraception is introduced. We are told that family is bad, right? So what it, what it comes to is a broken home usually because now, now the male is allowed to go out and, and sleep around and things like that. Gets caught, broken home, unfortunately. Something along those lines, right? Loss of connection, emotional connection and things like that with the wife, with the family. So next we're going to go with that false conception of what a real man is or that false concept, sorry, of what a real man is. Funny story, uh, my niece had a birthday party a month or so ago. My cousin took all the kids out for um, bowling, right? I was with them at the beginning, but then I left because, you know, I'm a boring guy. I like to get up early, go to sleep early. So I left. He took them bowling. Funny thing is, her boyfriend's there chatting with him. False concept of what a man is. Look, Sam, what's the most shots you've ever taken in your life? You know, how many, how many drinks have you ever had? That's a false concept. And I was, and I was, uh, you know, I fed into that lie when I was younger as well. So we've got this false concept of what a real man is. A real man is, is, is you know, a high tolerance for drugs and alcohol and things like that, you know. Or I can beat you up so I'm more of a man. Just because you can beat me up doesn't mean you're more of a man. You might just be blessed to be a bigger individual. Someone that, you know, if, you're, if you outweigh me by 40 pounds, it's, it's a more, more likely chance that you're going to be able to beat me up. That doesn't mean you're more of a man than me. Just because you can drink more alcohol than me does not mean you're, you're more of a man than me. Just because you can do more drugs doesn't mean you're more of a man than me. You know, it, it actually probably gives the, the look of you being less of a man because you can't control yourself. You let emotions get the best of you because most likely if we are participating in, in that activity, it's because we have something wrong with us in general. As I've become older and I've stopped drinking myself, I've realized, you know, it's a self-medication. Medicating myself for the issues in my life that I'm afraid to confront. Okay, so that's going to be one right there. Next one is we, we've been fed this lie that you know, men can't be emotional. If you cry, there's something wrong with you. You're a sissy. There's nothing, you know, you can't, you can't be that way. Men don't show emotions. And unfortunately, in that sense, because it's also about breaking the family up, because once the family's broken apart, they've won, right? It's the same thing. If, if, you're, if you're emotionally illiterate, you're unable to express your emotions like I, myself, and my friends are. I'm getting better at it. Um, you, you are not able to express your emotions and your feelings with your loved one, with your wife, with your children. And if you're unable to express your feelings and your emotions with your wife, that itself is going to lead to growing apart, which could possibly lead to adultery, divorce. Because if you can't open up to that person that you're with every day, you're sharing a bed with, you're sharing your most intimate moments with, how are things going to last? If you're unable to talk to your children, where do you think they are going to be going for their advice? They're going to be going to friends. They're going to be turning to drugs. They're going to be turning to alcohol. So that's another false concept that we've been programmed with to believe that is leading our, our young men, myself, fathers, down the wrong path and down a road of destruction. Next is that, you know, you got to be a player. That's kind of what they say. If a, if a man sleeps around, he's a player. If a woman sleeps around, she's, you know, it could be children watching, but she's a slut. She sleeps around, right? Double standard. But once again, that's the same thing. If I've heard plenty of women that will say they're, they're bisexual or whatever, and it's be, you, you kind of talk with them, why have you decided to go that route? Well, every man I've ever dated is a jerk. You know, doesn't know how to treat a woman. And of course, another woman is going to know how to treat a woman better. They're on that emotion. You know, they don't have that false concept of what a real man is. They're not on that 
you know, I got to be high and mighty and, and tough and rough. No, women are emotional beings, so they can connect that way. That's why men ourselves have to connect that way. But then we got the whole opposite spectrum. Now men, men nowadays are becoming too feminine, right? So feminine to where you can see it in the way that we dress, the way that we act, right? And, and that can be a downfall as well for men because women then don't want too feminine of a guy. But we have to find that happy medium on where we should be. And it's always going to be trial and error. You're, you're always going to get rejected by women and, and whatever the case may be. And this is something now that I've been hanging out with more religious people, church folks. I'm a, you know, a co-worker that's a big Catholic, so now I can have more of a Catholic discussion. And he brought up the topic of pornography. And I've now been kind of looking into the website called Your Porn on Brain, or Your Brain on Porn. I'm going to do a video on it. Um, but this is the same thing. This is that false concept of, of you have to sleep around, you have to be a player. And unfortunately, with the pornography coming into play, now men are unable to view a woman for what her actual worth is. We have this false concept of what a woman is now, right? That she's just to be, you know, dominated and taken advantage of when that's not the case at all. So then men get a false concept of a woman and we no longer even know how to treat a woman because we don't really know what a woman is. And then once we finally get into a situation where we are trying to conversate with a real woman, we mess it all up because we have no clue how to approach these things because we've been dating girls and we haven't been dating a woman, right? So that was for broken homes where I have come from. Like I said, I've, I, I came from a broken home. So that is all the, you know, some of the scenarios I would have liked to give in more, but of a broken home. Next is going to be a father in the home, a family there, right? There can also be a downfall there of a fatherless child in those homes. And I've, I've discussed uh, with some people, uh, my buddy Drew is a gentleman who says that he won't have children until he, you know, reaches a certain amount of money in his bank account or has his business up and running. And that's great. We need to be financially stable for the blessing of a child. and the ability to support that child and your family. That is great. But like I have discussed in the motherless nation, if you wait too long, father time is going to catch up and you might not be able to have a child, right? If you can't have a child, I mean, what was the point of all that sacrifice? You don't even have anyone to leave these things to this legacy that you tried to build for yourself. And I didn't, uh, I wanted to do my research on that in the Bible. I think it's in Proverbs of Psalm that Psalms, they talk about, a true legacy of a man is on the way that his children act and grow up. That's a true legacy. You know, the people that you encounter daily and how you change their lives for the better is a true legacy, not what you built in the material world. Um, so, and then like I said, the unable to connect because of that false concept of a real man. You can't connect with your child. So you're unable to connect with your child. There's going to be that resentment there because they feel like you're never there even though you are there. And the next thing is wanting to leave that legacy for your child, the family business. Like I said, the people that I've talked to, there's a lot of, of entrepreneurs out there who create these huge businesses and, and make a lot of money. But when it comes down to it, their, parent or their children don't want to take over the business. And why is that? Is that because they don't like the business? Or could it be for 20 years of their life, their father was never there because he was too busy trying to build that business. He was too busy trying to give his son luxuries or his daughter the luxuries of an iPhone, an iPad, you know, all these material things when all they really wanted was love and for them to be there. So then the unfortunate thing is they don't want to be a part of the business. They don't even like their father. They hate their father. And you know, then that's when you get into that concept of now the children are engaging in, in uh, friendships or boyfriend-girlfriend relationships with not that great of people because they have that resentment for their own parents that aren't there, their own father. So they surround themselves with like-minded people, which unfortunately is most likely a bad crowd, right? So what, how does the church combat this? What can the Catholic Church do to help with this issue? Now, we all know, of course, when it comes down to it, I got my notes down here, 
uh, Matthew 23, 9, where it says, You shall call no man father on this earth, for you have your father in heaven. Right? But what can the church, what has the church done to combat this? And for me, like I said, coming from a broken home, this is something that I've always struggled with because in the Catholic Church, we call our priests father. And that's the verse, Matthew 23, 9, that they usually use as defense against that. Right? They'll say, well, the Bible says right there, you shouldn't do it. But we call our priests father. And coming from a broken home myself, never having a father figure there, that's something I struggle with. And it's not because I, I agree with the Matthew 23, 9. It's just for me not having a father figure, it's always been hard to call him father because of those deep scars and those, and those issues of never having a father around. So for me, it's an uncomfortable thing to even call the priest father. So that's a way to be able to slowly develop that relationship with the word father, with a father figure for those people such as myself or even from from a child's point of view that had a father that was just never there due to work that has that those father issues because just because like I said just because a father was there doesn't mean that you really had a father so where else is it in the Bible where we can at least um, debate against that verse Matthew 23 9 let's see first we're gonna go 1 Corinthians 4 14 and 15 and that's where it says I am not writing this to make you ashamed but to a to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you might have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. Indeed, in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. So right there, that is a, that's Paul saying that I am your father. Next, we'll go to Philippians 2.22, and that says, but, Tim but Timothy's worth you know, how like a son with a father, he has served with me in the works of the gospel. So once again, Paul is referring to himself as the father and Timothy as his son. And then the last one is going to be Timothy, let's see, Timothy 2, 2 Timothy 2, 1. You then, my children, be strong in the grace of that is Christ Jesus. So he's called, once again, he's calling us, the readers, his children, which would indicate that he is our father. So, like I said, I think that's a way that the church, it, like I said, it might have not been intended to, but just as society starts to progress, and of course the negative along with the good comes into, excuse me, comes into play, this is a way that we are able to overcome this unfortunate issue of a fatherless nation, children without father. Like I said, for me, it's something that I struggle with in calling um, the priest father, calling my own father father, you know, or dad. That's something that I struggle with because he was never there. There's no relationship. There's no depth. I don't really know who he is. And unfortunately, that goes on in America everywhere. And this is why I think calling your priest Father can be a great tool to start the healing process for these lost children in our lives or in the world. So, once again, I appreciate your time. Subscribe to the channel, share, and like these videos.